who looked at the sun this is geography except you are no longer a christian because this is in your bible the bible says the things that are written are for time they are for our learning so that we through the comfort of scripture might find hope Joshua stood and told the son, stand still. Because there is a battle to be commanded. Imagine that that happens over a nation. There will be more salvation in one day than we struggle to create out of this begging people, please be saved. No, no. The gospel is the power of God. And if it is true that it is the power of God, that power should be demonstrated here and now. Please listen carefully. The Bible talks about angels who threw physical hailstones we talk today about the ministry of angels the average believer does not even have an idea of the ministry of angels i'm not just talking of someone who is inclined to the prophetic and can see them or see the similitude an average believer in spite of the fact that they were sent the bible talks a lot about them the average believer has no idea look at this when gabriel appeared to mary mary was not surprised at the angel she was surprised at the salutation not the presence of the angel in fact the bible says how that in acts chapter 12 when peter was brought out of prison when he went to where the brethren were paying they opened the door and saw him they closed it back thinking it was his angel god take us to higher levels we are tired of the and you know brothers and sisters listen to me it is this little we do that we boast of it is this little i am apostle joshua selman a great man of god what is the achievement oh someone is shouting while i'm preaching someone is falling while i'm preaching congratulations but this will not bring the glory and the power of god there is a demonstration of the reality of heaven on earth that will happen before christ comes they called the apostles Zeus and Hermes. When you study classical Greek mythology, these were gods that came as a result of the aberration of these spirit beings with women. There is a dimension of kingdom authority that until we bring this talk of revival, when you read about the world's revival under the leadership of Evan Roberts, the Bible says that the power of God, or not the Bible history, that just carrying the newspaper alone to read about the revival, right there and then the power of God will break out. Like reading, you are reading. And yet we write books all the time. And people read our books and the only thing they write out is what we, we said that was wrong. And nothing happens to them. Oh God, you are my God. It says, early will I seek you, Psalm 63. My soul longs for you. My flesh, as in a dry and a weary land, to see your power and your glory as I have seen in the sanctuary. Watch this. If this guy has Qatar, a running nose, Medical science tells us that if I stand close to him sufficiently, it is possible that I will receive it. Now, the Qatar does not care whether I'm a Christian or not. It doesn't even care whether I have faith in it or not. It vetoes whatever I believe and enters my nose. So why can't I stand near him and the healing comes to him? If sickness can be transferred, doesn't it make sense that divine life and health can also be true not by corporately praying this guy did not intend to give you the qatar there was just proximity watch this listen please listen please listen we claim we have the life of god we claim the zoe life we're a generation that understands greek and hebrew and yet you shake someone and his life remains the same 
Yet you go to someone's shop and if say God bless you and even drop a tract and nothing changes. But the Bible says the apostles, they waited for the shadow of Peter. Not the shadow of Peter. When Jesus came into your home, you were already rejoicing. Because whatever the problem was in that house, you knew that it was God. Why don't they rejoice when we come to the homes of people? Because they know nothing will happen. I'm shaking off what you have called Christianity and opening you up to a new dimension of hunger. That you are not just praying because you want to find a salmon so that your contemporaries will think you have revelation. There is a hunger that can drive you to say, God, there has to be more. I am tired of this. In the southeast, in Enugu state, Lord, there has to be a portal of revival that is broken within this city. To the point that people go to God only when charms fail. I hope you know that for the average believer, going to God as the first port of call is not it. The moment people are in trouble, they honestly say, Lord, I love you. I have not denounced you. I am only being wise. Wisdom is profitable to direct. Because we have a track record of being noisemakers. In the name of Jesus, I command that power. It is done. And the person goes right into it. I'm not being sarcastic. I'm planting an anger in you. Someone is praying because demons are oppressing him. And you finish dry fast. And on the third day, as soon as you are finishing, you want to take a nap for five minutes, the same demons come again. As if they didn't see you praying. Something is wrong. Do you know, you've heard my story. Do you know that years ago, even as a preacher, demons used to oppress me. I would finish preaching and because of the prophetic, I will watch them enter my room. Like you are opening the door, you are entering. Did I believe a false Jesus? I will shout blood of all, the th all these things you shout. Holy Ghost, fire, blood. nothing happened. They had no regard for it whatsoever. I said something is wrong because this Bible is not a lie. That means that there is something I'm not getting. If you don't understand what I'm saying, the days that are coming will test your conviction. And God is saving you from dying like a chicken in the hands of a harsh reality that is coming upon the earth. I prayed for people with HIV. They were not healed though. I prayed for people with cancer. Many died. I prayed for people who were buried. I even felt the anointing. Absolutely nothing happened. I prayed for people on wheelchair. They spoke about me, a mighty man of God. And when I went to those homes, I saw that they had faith. And yet I prayed. I called on Jesus and nothing happened. People will come to me and say, I'm trusting God for this. And I'll pray for them. In the name of Jesus. And I see them one year later. Absolutely nothing has happened to them. I said, Lord, I can't be a preacher like this. This is the kind of state that will make you envious, angry. You will fight yourself and fight every other person when you don't have results. Either you bring me into the reality of this substance. I cannot be preaching things that I don't have the grace to defend. God is this. God can do that. I speak over people. In the name of Jesus, may your life change. They say amen and nothing happens. Through desire, a man having separated himself, there is a requisite level of hunger that brings God to you. When you casually cross your leg and say, God, I'm in need of you. As if you are calling your mate, you will never find him. He more, hunger is a magnet. There is a way your hunger can, can reach the heavens. And God knows you mean business with him. I got to a point where I was dissatisfied with church. Not in a negative way. 
I said, if the sick continue to be sick, what if the person sick is now my relative? There has to be a way out. The more I read my Bible, I was, I, I, I was, I was almost confused. Something is wrong. People would call me and say, pray for me. They said, you are a great man of God. And yet, absolutely nothing will happen. And listen, men of God, I say this with all due respect. You have to love God enough to throw away your ego. Or just keep telling them you don't have faith. Because the truth is, those people have faith. The fact that they came to you. When a patient meets the doctor, he has done his own part. The remaining is the professionalism of that doctor. Otherwise, how do you raise a dead body that cannot believe whether it can come back to life or not? My son, give me your heart and let your eyes observe my ways. When you go to a herbalist, watch this. Don't go there in the name of Jesus Christ. You, you, can, you can glean from what you have learned from Nigerian film. All right, when you go to a herbalist, the first thing he does is to listen to you, sir. I'm broke, and while you are talking, he's laughing. What do you want? I want a lot of money. He's not going to say, Go, it is done. He will tell you, Okay, based on your request, he has been trained to know what pattern creates that outcome because the, it's all a manipulation of spiritual laws. So he will tell you, For what you want. You will need a goat. You will need a chicken. You need one bag of beans. You need a. You will need to bath. Now he is not guessing. He has been trained to know, because those patterns create an altar in the spirit, and they bring the spirits that back men to have that outcome. Are you getting what I'm saying now? Yes, sir. So you go and do what he asks you to do. And then you get up all of a sudden you put the little charm in your shop and suddenly customers begin to come and you too you are watching with shock your neighbor who does not like you also comes to buy it and you say wow this thing works and yet the bible says once have i spoken and twice have you heard that all power belongs to god that means there is an accurate spiritual way of routing these mysteries to the point that see it is on the strength of what i'm teaching you that the bible says for we know that all things work together because if you have been delayed for instance there is a spiritual pattern that is responsible for restoration and if you can engage it even your years can be restored are we together when it was time for the animals to come into the ark what did Noah do that made him not to go and look for those animals? By themselves, they started coming two by two, seven by seven. If you know what Noah did, you can do that for members in your church. If you know what Noah did, you can do that for finances in your life. What mystery did Noah invoke? He just stood near the ark and on their own volition, they kept coming. Because we see that Jesus used the same pattern. He climbed a mountain. People followed him there. He went to the valley. They followed him there. Our world is immersed in mysteries. And these mysteries are responsible for predictable outcomes. Are we together? Yes, sir. When you know this, after this conference, you will run back home and stand in front of your gate and make an announcement to the realm of the spirit that this is no longer the ignorant person that went I, I went for a conference now I know what to say to sanitize the spiritual atmosphere you are not guessing you know that this is the secret the day I found the key to my liberty I ran back home and I stood outside and I begged those demons to come I didn't cast them I pleaded with them until tomorrow they have refused to come. The light shines in darkness. Truly the light shines in darkness. If it is really light, it will shine in darkness. I remember the day I caught 
the revelation of the healing ministry. I prayed for a woman on phone. This was somebody who, it was a gentleman I meant to say. Now, I, I'm not a doctor, but you know when your spine is broken, completely broken, they call it something fracture. I don't know what the name is. I remember praying for that gentleman. Then phones just came out. And they started doing, a, 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 I think then, night call or something like that. I prayed for that gentleman. When that gentleman was healed, that thing shook the teaching hospital because they brought the x-ray. You cannot deny this. They were already preparing to bring a consultant from India. Miracles are not gibberish. If it is true, it can be proven scientifically. That one miracle that happened, I remember praying for at least without exaggeration, may God forgive me if I'm lying, at least 17 nurses and doctors. Because when people discern that you really have results, they will start opening what they have been hiding and say, honestly, let me tell you, even as a doctor, I have problems too. Help me. They are keeping quiet because they are not sure we have a solution. I made up my mind and I told God if you truly want me to serve your purposes to a generation please give me understanding and put something upon my life that will grant me the grace to demonstrate this spiritual reality let me not come and teach and people are in bondage and they share the grace and go back and then they say Joshua Selman came and the worst part of it is when people now begin to sow seeds to honor you. They honor you based on the perception that you have invested something in their lives. And if you have not invested anything, that is fraud. We are desperate people. We want more, more love. We are desperate people. We want more, more love. We are desperate people. We want more, more love. We are desperate people. We want more. Please stand here. Let me have maybe three or four other people come. Hold on, hold on, guys. Okay. Just. Okay, take it easy, take it easy. Just spread yourselves, just spread yourselves. Just spread yourselves. Now, watch this. Listen. Hey, hello, let's, let's save time. Watch this. I want to demonstrate something for you. Watch this. Let's call this, we are going to call these different results that the average believer needs. Let's call this healing. Let's call this restoration. Are we together now? Let's call this, uh, what do we call it now? Fruitfulness. Let's call this spiritual fire and hunger. Are we together? Let's call this passion for God. Let's call this um, speed. Let's call this church growth. Now watch this. Do you know that in the dealings of God with men, all these dimensions are a possibility? But every one of them has a mystery. Please give us Matthew chapter 13 and verse 11. Jesus began to teach and he was introducing the disciples to a concept in the kingdom. And he called it mysteries. He says, because it has been given unto you to know the mysteries of the kingdom. A mystery is a hidden code of operation. It's a body of light that is privy to a group of people. For instance, the army have their languages. If a military man speaks to a fellow military man, if you are not a military man, you may not understand. It's a code of operation. We call it a mystery. There is a way a wife will talk to her husband. If you are not within that family, you will not understand what they are saying. Is that true? With respect to a foreigner, the Igbo language is a mystery. Because while you are speaking it, the person will not understand. It is not fruitful. Now watch this. In the kingdom, we engage mysteries to rise. The mysteries are a body of spiritual knowledge given to the saints that produce victory here and now in the life of the believer. It is on the strength of these mysteries that we command dominion. Watch this. So I am in need of church growth as a man of God. 
I desperately need church growth. What then is the mystery that supports church growth? The spirit of revelation comes to me now and begins to lead me to scriptures like, I, if I be lifted up from the earth, I will draw all men. So I'm seeing a key there that for as long as I'm promoting myself, God is not committed. That the more I lift up Christ, he himself will draw men. I now begin to study the gospel of Mark and I see the wilderness ministry of Jesus. The Bible says it was noised abroad that Jesus was in town. Who noised it we do not know. There are angels that announced things. When Jesus was born, there were angels that came and met shepherds that were watching their flock by night. That means if you are a real shepherd, you should not only watch your flock by day, you have to watch your flock too by night. Because it was while they watched their flock. A night time is not a convenient time of watching flocks. It is the sacrifice of watching your flock by night that exposes you to the ministry of angels. So if you only shepherd people while it is convenient, there are dimensions of God's grace you will not access. You must be willing to watch over your flocks by night. These are principles scattered. John 4, 48. It says, except ye see signs and wonders, miraculous signs and wonders, you will not believe. So I then know that there is another piece to the puzzle. That for as long as people come and they don't have the opportunity to experience the power of God, they may not be motivated to stay and be planted. And so I go back to God, who is the giver, of this power and cry are you seeing all the ingredients now i combine these ingredients like fried rice and i produce an enviable ministry i'm trusting god for speed in my life maybe i got born again at age 40. i hope you know that's already delayed your life congratulations for being born again but that's already delayed because it takes a long time to know god when will you get filled with the Holy Ghost, pray in tongues, get mentored, and then grow? And yet, I must catch up in life. Then I go to the scripture, and I find it written there that I will restore the years. Not just the things. So time can be restored. That there is a way of exerting dominion over time. And I find out the principle. Jesus Christ told the disciples to saddle the boat and go they were six hours ahead of him and then he was praying and he was six hours late you would call that delay but when he got up he started walking on water and within a short time he met them that means my contemporaries can go ahead of me but there is something i can do while they are going and when i get up within one year i have caught up with them but do you know that secret Listen, listen to me. This gentleman is trying to produce results in his life. You went to school as a graduate, no job. All your loved ones, no job. You went to do your masters, no job. There is a dimension of fruitfulness. The, the understanding that sponsors fruitfulness. Listen, do not use your results to define God. God is higher and bigger than our results. If I die today, God forbid, it still does not mean that long life is not a reality. Let God be true and all men be liars. If you really want to know God, you must be able to be open-hearted and receive of all that he is, even the dimensions beyond your current experience. We have built theological explanations around our pains and our limitations. And by it, we have limited God. Do you know that there is a way I can suffer in life suffer so much in life when someone talks about favor I'll be angry with that message because that that reality has not been captured in my Christian experience I am used to suffering before I get things so when you say God can change your life overnight I call it nonsense the Bible says oh taste and see the goodness of the Lord can be tasted and it can be seen so this gentleman is looking for fruitfulness. Apostle, I'm trying to get a job. There is no job. And then you go to the scripture and find where 
the husband man was looking for laborers in his field and he saw others sitting and said why sittest thou idle he said nobody employ us immediately he spoke they got something to do that means there is something you can do my goodness and my god that overnight it will be like a charm there are people who understand these mysteries they will never spend three months without a job if you don't know the mysteries of the kingdom and you hear those who understand them you will think it's pride it is not pride they are speaking based on the certainty of these things let's look at luke chapter one we're going to pray shortly is god blessing someone the christian experience is a plethora of frustrations until you understand the ways of god God is covering the gaps in our Christian experience. Luke chapter 1 from verse 1. We are reading the first four verses. Can you see it where you are? Okay, if you can see it, let's, let's do our best to read it. We are reading from verse 1 to 4. Ready? Read. For as much as many have taken in hand to set forth in order a declaration... Of those things which are most surely believed among us uh-huh even as they delivered them unto us which from the beginning were eyewitnesses take note and ministers of the word now verse 3 it seemed good to me also having what had perfect understanding stop there a man can have perfect understanding of scripture perfect understanding of all things from the very first to write unto thee in order most excellent to your fellows why verse 4 if you are a christian that thou mightest know the certainty of those things wherein thou has been instructed i do not want you to just believe it because i'm a man of god and you believe me i want you to get to a point of accuracy where you know that this is the key that controls this outcome. I want to say something that looks like, I hope it's not mistaken for pride. May God forgive me and you forgive me if it sounds like pride. But when I began ministry, I found out, I really could not point many men of God, sir, that every region seemed to receive them. I found out that for most ministers it was only their region that received them and received of their ministry that in one region a man can be so received and loved and then in another region he can be so hated and castigated i said but the gospel cannot go far that way there are men of god who if they go outside africa nobody seems to receive them others if they come to africa nobody receives them others if they go to the south or north or east or west and i said lord there has to be a difference and the lord showed me a mystery and when i found that mystery i said every region will receive of my grace and it is true by the grace of god today and with all humility there is no region not in this nation not outside of this nation that has not received this that god is doing to the glory of the name of the lord be careful when you use your experiences to define god all you have experienced is not all there is come up here there is always more come up here now my question to you tonight is which part of these mysteries do you not know because that is the part that authorizes the reign of darkness in your life if you desire revival if you desire a life that demonstrates the power the glory the grace of god my question is what part do you not know this takes a lot of humility because you see just because you are excelling in your finances does not mean your health is all right most times we use one area in our life where we are doing well to just make it look like every area is doing well and we will not pursue the areas where we are yet to see the faithfulness of God hungry people are those who say thank you Lord Jesus thank you for the teaching anointing you gave me i'm a sound teacher but i need a grace for performance because i'm saying a lot of things i cannot defend i thank you for giving me the teaching grace but in addition i cry and i covet for the sake of your glory the grace that brings a demonstration to those things which are said now this will bring completion to your christian experience
Thank God for the little that he has done in and through my life. But I submit to you, till today, till tomorrow, I'm still a student in the school of the Spirit. When I'm with the Lord, I say, Lord, your boy has come again. Oh. They call me Apostle Joshua Selman. They call me great man of God. They call me miracle worker. I call myself a student in your school. You are the rabbi. Come and teach me. I am passionate about the areas of ignorance in my life. I don't allow this arrogant big manism of ministry to destroy me. I am aware that there is so much I do not know. And I humble my feet, myself at his feet to learn his ways. When I'm done with all these great conference and I have the opportunity to go back, I say, Lord, I'm back. Your boy is back. Thank you for what you did around the regions, but I'm here. Let us learn again. And the Holy Spirit says, all right, now that you are here, the next lecture, let me show you what you do not know. And suddenly he will open your eyes to a dimension of spiritual reality. Swallow your pride tonight. Come to the school of the spirit. Don't you know? In his hands are the keys to eternal life. It's a little bit, a little bit. Soon your day will come. He's at work in you, changing everything. Listen to me. Tonight I'm stimulating a hunger in you. Don't say I've been 10 years in the Lord. Congratulations. But what do you know and what do you not know? Do you understand the keys that can replicate the glory, the power, the grace of God? I am very broken and humbled by our fathers, the great men of God over this city who have painstakingly taken the time to come and sit in this conference. For me, there is no greater show of humility than what they have done. Because these are men with results in their own regards. But then to come and sit and learn. And yet there are many young people who have not even started ministry. Moving around in small groups and their arrogance will not let them learn. I'm not being sarcastic. The proof of transformation among many things is humility. And awareness that there is so much you do not know. I made up my mind that I would study these keys. I knew that I came from a background where favor was a luxury. I didn't see many people who represented favor. And I knew I was in ministry. And I didn't want to compromise to start manipulating people. I, I, I said, Lord, show me this key so that I don't go around, you know, defrauding people. I want to do ministry with integrity. For one month I prayed and I studied about favor. I don't want the distraction. Do you know money can distract? Lack of it. If, if you are not in ministry or you are not a leader, you will never understand. That lack of money can make you to be awake in the night and yet you are not praying. It's a very evil, evil thing. Are we together? There are many well-behaved people who lack of money change them. And I made up my mind. And for one month, I studied on this mystery of favor. And I found some keys. Esther chapter 2 and verse 15, the B part. I found from scripture. And Esther obtained favor in the sight of all them that looked upon her. That when favor is upon you, the only person that cannot bless you is a blind person. But for as long as they have eyes to see, there is a grace that compels men to bless you. I also found in Exodus chapter 3 and verse 21. And I will give these people favor in the sight of the Egyptians. And it shall come to pass that when ye go, ye shall not go empty. So emptiness has an explanation. And then for a long time in church, I was told that favor was unmerited. And the Holy Ghost told me not so. Favor is merited. 
Proverbs 13 and verse 15. Good understanding procured favor, but the way of the transgressor is hard. There is a mother that gives birth to a child and the name of that child is favor. The name of the mother is good understanding. There is what you can understand to bring favor. Favor is predictable. It is programmable. I travel a lot. I come from the north. My life is surrounded by so many risks. I had to go to the word of God to find out the key to longevity in this wicked and evil world. Listen to me. Don't feel offended. I'm, this is an apostolic conference. And so God is shaking us and challenging us. And then I began to search. And I found certain principles. Honor your father and your mother. That your days may be long and it shall be well with you. This is why many young people is not well with them. Because our pride will make us insult anyone. You have your revelation. You will insult your pastor or you. You don't have any revelation. You are not anointed. And while you are saying that, you don't know that that act of disobedience is raising an altar in the spirit. The Bible says, I shall not die but live and declare. So if you are alive and you are not supporting the cause of God's kingdom, your living is a waste. The condition that you shall not die is that you are declaring the works of the Lord. Are we together? I said before you life and death. I said before you blessing and cursing. Choose life. You are drunk and on your, you're on your way on the road and there is a truck coming. You have chosen death. That truck will hit you and kill you and that will be the end of it. This is the implication of choosing life. Listen. I agree that you've given your life to Christ. The next assignment in the name of the Lord Jesus is to be like a spiritual archaeologist and begin to search for the mysteries of the kingdom that, that command exact outcomes. You come from a family where nobody has ever risen. Don't take that risk of hoping that life will just manufacture a way of victory and give it to you. You have to go to the word and find out it is for this cause he gave unto some apostles and some prophets and some evangelists and pastors and teachers for the maturing of the saints that the saints now being matured will do the work of the ministry to the end that we corporately as a people we come into the fullness of the measure of the stature of Christ he says not being tossed to and fro by every wind of doctrine and the slight of men wherein they lie to deceive there must be an appetite not just for Bible study there must be an appetite not just for devotionals there must be an appetite not just for studying Greek and Hebrew so that you can preach A quest for light exact kingdom principles that are patterns that control certain outcomes the brief time we had with your dear pastor our father we we're just talking in the office and he began to talk to me and we we're discussing the issue of rest do you know that many people have died not because of Satan they have died because of sheer exhaustion in ministry and yet there is a pattern one of the scariest scripture in, in the bible is and god rested not an angel god rested if god rested then man must rest to survive if man does not rest there will be a consequence for that the consequence is that your body will be so deteriorated your spirit will no longer be able to live there there is a requisite level of health in your body that your spirit needs to remain in when it becomes so damaged the spirit will leave you call it death 
So, having found this, you now learn to shut. You know, years ago, I used to be there for everybody. People will call and say, Apostle, you told us God sent you to us. And I just come and I can't rest. They will sleep. They are happy. When they are alive, they are healthy. They stretch and they start ringing my phone. And I feel guilty every time I don't ignore them. I mean, I ignore them because I say, oh God, I, I promise you that I will serve your people. One day the Lord delivered me. Let me tell you the story of my deliverance. The Lord asked me to look at the crucifix in a church. The crucifix, you know, that. And I found out for the first time that my face was not the one there. That I am only pointing people to the one that died. That I am not the one that died. Now, you may laugh, but it was a deliverance for me. I probably would have been dead by now. Now, listen to me. We are going to pray. The Lord brought us to this conference to give us light. Now, while you are sitting, you can see that many of the things you have blamed God about, God has no hand in it. It is your not understanding the methodical approach to the kingdom life. You're now seeing, oh, I have helpers all around me and nobody wants to help me. I can tell you with, with razor sharp accuracy, the principle you have failed to observe, it is called dishonor. Dishonor is the reason why many helpers around you have refused to help you. I can tell you why your spiritual life is down. Because... For your spiritual health, the menu for your spiritual health is the ministry of the word and the ministry of prayer. It is a non-negotiable condition. Whether you are a preacher or not, if it is for you to be healthy, you must have an appetite and a discipline. Praying and studying the word is more than a desire. It is a discipline. It has nothing to do with convenience. It's a covenant. It's a discipline. If you allow desire alone to guide your spiritual growth, you will never grow. Because there are times you will not want to study the Bible. You are For legitimate reasons. Rain beats you. You came back home. You are tired. Or you ate swallow. You ate something heavy. You are feeling sleepy. These are natural laws, but you have to discipline yourself. Who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despised the shame. I don't study the Bible just because it's convenient. You think because God has called me into an apostolic ministry, I have a supernatural desire for scripture just like that anytime. It's not true. There are times I want to sleep too. But then when you think about the burden of your growth, and the burden of a generation that is on your back, you will stand up immediately and shake off that sleep and get to work. There is a lot of indiscipline in the body of Christ. We are people of convenience. You pray when it is convenient. You study when it is convenient. No, you will not grow that way. This already is a deliverance for someone. Because you think just because the Holy Spirit is at work in you, automatically he will move you to just go and open your Bible and be smiling. You know, we talk a lot about the word of God. We love the word of God. Some of us even kiss it. The truth is when all the stakes are down, it takes discipline. There are times you stare at the word of God almost as if you will flog it. But you have to read it to know. Do you know the amount of time and research and study it takes to prepare one message? One one serious message it takes time so if you are saying god call me bring me into ministry i want to minister your purposes to the nations he looks at you and says even though you have that desire you do not yet know the pattern that it takes to be a man of god who is not ashamed the key is to study to show yourself approved is god revealing areas in our lives where we need to work on. You don't pray for five minutes and just yawn. Ten minutes, yawn. You are baffing. That's when you pray in tongues. And you are baffing and then you finish and you want to carry spiritual power. 
I hate to be the bearer of bad news, but you must take God more serious than that. If it's authentic power you want to carry. There was a time in my life, I spent 72 hours non-stop. 72 hours. My eye did not know whether it was day or night. Generating energy and power in the spirit. Let's respect the sacrifices of people. This is a generation that has no regard for the sacrifice of people. Are we blessed? There is a level of hunger that I'm trusting that God will put in our lives tonight. I desire to walk in the anointing and I took time to study. There is, there is almost nobody on earth who is known historically who has worked in the supernatural power of God that have not studied their materials it's not just that I was sitting and Jesus came to me ask him I had to follow them who through faith and patience have obtained the promise there is hardly any campground in this nation I've not gone to to take out time to pray quietly I smuggle myself or I take advantage of times when I go to preach you've heard my story many of you in in the message of an encounter that that happened in equity I found out that there was a grace for long life in a very strange way there I finished ministering there and I was on my way back I didn't say I'm a man of God I stopped there and I went to that city It was a Christian place a small place I didn't find anybody there who was speaking English and we said who is the oldest man that lives in this city please tell them that we are men of God and that we want him to pray for the grace for long life I didn't do big manism because the Bible says follow them who through faith and patience have obtained not are obtaining 140 something years 130 something years that's not a mistake in this wicked world are we together we're going to pray I remember we finally found someone who does not speak Yoruba very well and uh, does not speak English very well and we said please help us interpret to that Baba and we said sir we came to tap the grace for long life he said kneel down he didn't even say are you a man of God are you a big man of God? he said kneel down two of you all of you kneel down those who have this thing know they have it when that man began to pray I tell you the truth and I lie not I felt like a crown was just put upon my head and when he finished brought out a seed and gave him we are on our way to go and enter the car when they now showed me the wife of the man who just died at 132 I think she probably will be a hundred and something and yet she was standing looking like our father here I said let's go back the man is dead but the wife is alive two have become one I went back and I tapped the woman I said madam they should they should interpret please your husband is dead but he's alive in you whatever grace kept you this long and the woman tapped me said come follow me we entered the room and she started showing me pictures from before my parents were born she was the wife of his youth now i'm trying to show you something please just understand what i'm telling you and i said i'm a man of god let me carry that grace too among the graces that i carry to every region as a way of keeping god's people strong for the end time assignment and the woman said kneel down she took off two of her shoes when a woman removes her shoe to pray for you my brother, even if you understand what they are saying or not, just receive it with all your heart. That woman prayed from the depth of her heart. And that's why every time I travel and there are impartations, there are many graces that fall on people. Many graces. And tonight I'm praying in the name of Jesus that among the many graces that will fall on you, that these two will rest on your life. Yeah. 
Are we blessed? When the Lord revealed his angel to me and said, this angel will walk with you, he's called the angel of the Lord's presence. You will be responsible for the signs, the wonders, the revivals, the awakenings that happen across regions and territories. On the strength of that encounter, every time I travel, I travel with joy. Do you know why? Not to go and showcase a man of God who is anointed, but an opportunity to be an extension of those possibilities to the body of Christ. So that the regions that hitherto have not experienced those dimensions or to the fullness that should be can now receive a supply of those dimensions. Our time is up. We have to pray. But listen to me. When you give God your heart, your next assignment is to know his ways. You must sit down. Lord, what is the key to this outcome? Not if it will happen, it will happen. No, sir. What is the key to revival? The key to revival according to scripture has always been the ministry of prayer with fasting for a very long time. Read history. Every time there was a move of God within a territory, there had to be intercessors who invested the ministry of prayer with fasting for a prolonged period. One month fasting will not bring revival. It takes people who are intercessors as a call. That means if you are trusting that God should bring revival in Enugu, you are also praying that the spirit of prophetic intercession must fall on people. Men and women who can take a weekend and cry before God and say, Lord, let the rain fall. Let the rain fall. Let the rain fall. Let the rain fall. While that person is praying like Anna the prophetess, there is a young boy somewhere in your university campus who will be minding his business and that prayer starts having an effect in him. God starts searching for those revivalists. A young lady will leave her mother's house going to the shop. On the way she has an encounter, God begins to recruit that army like a terrorist group. But while that is happening, the spirit, remember, the pattern is before God shows up, Elijah must precede him. Elijah is the spirit of revival. Elijah is not just a man. It's an apostolic and prophetic system that foreruns every move of God. So every time God is about to show up in a territory, the pattern is that Elijah must show up. Suddenly prayer groups begin to rise. Suddenly women, you know women are gates in the spirit. Women suddenly begin to pray. They don't even know what is driving them to pray. Groups that have no name and have no leader, they are not interested in titles. Someone begins to pray from his bedroom. Then the wife joins him. Then the neighbor joins him. They are not looking for ministry. It's a position of birthing. Because something is about to be delivered. This is already happening to some of you. There are women right now throughout this year. You found out that your sleep is no longer normal. It's the cry of the spirit. Would you deny a territory of revival? Would you allow sleep to rob a territory of revival? There are young men. Once it is night, it's as if you don't want to be among people. You find the back of one building and sit down on a stone there. Shakata badakata. Whereas you are, the, you are one of the revivalists that God is preparing. Let me tell you this. When God is preparing men, he never tells you you are part of the army because he does not want to distract your focus. If he tells you pride will eat you up, so he will allow you to continue. Even when you have passed the test, he will not tell you. Seated in this place right now, at the next level of greater than the Joshua Selmans. See, some of you are seated here. You know, when you ask who are the most anointed people, they will easily point at us. Not so. There are people who are in the cave of Adulam. They are not yet on TV. They don't even have the name of a ministry. There is the dealing of the spirit. I came to encourage you, don't stop. You are almost there. You don't understand the name of your training. It's a furnace of affliction. Pranda zileketebo sadata. 
you have those visions and the Lord says keep writing it keep writing it don't stop it's the birthing of something heavy your fathers have seen the revival coming upon Enugu your fathers have seen the revival coming upon the east of the Niger but there are patterns that must be kept the glory of God is hovering round the face of this city is saying where are the men and the women that are ready to cry to travel as to a woman who is about to give birth where are the men and women who will say Maranatha come 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 let the apostolic fire come Maranatha let the prophetic fire come let our altars be altars of fire not just altars of discussion
find me. Find my family. Someone lift your voice and pray. I am available, oh God. I'm available, oh God. I'm available, oh God. As the spirit of prayer moves the length and breadth of this city, I am available. As the mantle of the prophetic moves across the length and the breadth of this city, I am available. Someone pray. Someone pray. Shekapakatos. As the Davidic order of semistry moves across the length and the breadth of this state, I am available. Oh, 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 oh. hallelujah please listen to me I want you to let me just a few minutes we are stepping into a very prophetic defining moment this is my last session tonight something is about to come upon your destiny please listen please listen listen these guys you have done well thank you thank you let me pray for you eh? just hold my hand grace for you 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 new dimension in the spirit i speak over your lives by the power of the holy spirit you will never be the same in the name of jesus christ in the name of jesus christ now please listen listen it said my head has thou exalted like the horn of an unicorn and i am anointed there are people whose spiritual lives have gone down. Please be sensitive. Begin to bring them out. Hold on. There are people here who are called into the ministry of the prophetic. It's time to activate that grace now. You have seen it in dreams and visions. Men, women. There is a grace upon my life. I see the eye of an eagle. And every time I see the eagle, it's a signature of the prophetic. I stretch my hand in a good state. East of the Niger, I come to you by a prophetic and apostolic mandate that all those who are called into the prophetic at the count of three, may that mantle rest upon your life. One, two, three, take that grace. Bring them out. Take that grace. I stir up the prophetic. I stir up the prophetic. There are ladies here. Drink of the wells of Deborah. Carry the warrior spirit. I release you an unction upon your life.
women. Parato shalakata, embrakata kato koto plekete kete kete kete. In the name of Jesus, may that grace rest upon your destiny. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Please be sensitive. The Lord is opening my eyes in the realm of the spirit. And I'm seeing written above this church, Elijah. Elijah is the spirit of prayer and supplication. There is a mantle for prayer that is resting on people right now. The quickening of the spirit at the count of three. Fire upon your altar. One, two, three. Take that fire. Let there be a bathing. Prophetic intercessors, men and women who will fast and pray the revival that is needed to come upon this state, needed to come upon the east of the Niger. Bring them out. Fire upon your prayer life. Fire upon your prayer life. I found that altar in the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Who is Ugochuku? I'm hearing a name Ugochuku. No, no, no. Hold on, please. Please be orderly. Hold on. No. This man is like is, is a, a middle-aged man. You are wearing blue. A blue, complete blue overall. No, blue. Top, down, and up. Blue. Is there someone like that? What's your name, sir? Ugochuku Onyemej. You are a member of this church, sir? You are a pastor. Where? What's the name of the church? Just give me a few minutes. Sir, I'm looking at you in the realm of the spirit. And the Lord is telling me there is a prophetic grace that is coming upon your life in a strange way. Please come. In the name of Jesus Christ, carry that grace right now. Step into that new dimension. I decree and declare in the name of Jesus. There are two pastors I'm seeing in the spirit. The spirit of prophecy is coming upon them now. Two men of God. You are actively in ministry in the name of Jesus Christ. I don't know where you are, but wherever you are, may that anointing come upon you right now. Sir, I don't know who this gentleman is. At the back of our father this man you are a priest just stand where you are you are a priest but I'm looking at you in the spirit and the Lord is saying you will have a mighty healing ministry there is a grace for healing that the Lord is putting upon your hands I've never seen you I don't know you I pray for you sir in the name of Jesus Christ may that grace and may that anointing come upon your life you will lay hands on the sick and you will watch with precision the Lord will bring healing for them in the mighty name of Jesus Christ in the name of Jesus Christ is there a name like Nkechi Nkechi and Nkechi that, that's somebody's name who has a name like that Nkechi our time is fast spent we have to close My dear, look at me. Shout Jesus as loud as you can. In the name of Jesus, I stretch my hands towards you. The power that sits on the destiny of both you and your family members. I arrest it right now. I command that it gives way right now. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ.
please i i don't know but i don't know who this woman is but in the realm of the spirit i'm seeing a very mighty woman and the lord is saying there is a dimension of this revival that the grace is on her this woman please don't i hope i hope you are not embarrassed madam i'm seeing there is a mighty grace this is this has to do with the prophetic intercession and healing these three ministries the prophetic intercession and healing these three dimensions and the lord is saying he is going to multiply that grace i release that grace upon you in the name of jesus a multiplication of that grace by the power of the holy spirit that is uh, the pastor our father here one of his daughters is going to carry a very strange grace of influence this is what the lord is showing me one of our daddy's daughters in the name of jesus one it, where are his daughters that that's the general overseers come you will all be great but i'm seeing there's one of you there is the grace that was on esther this grace is on you father in the name of jesus i pray for these ladies by the supernatural power of the holy spirit the grace for influence influence over systems over structures my dear i don't know your name but an angel is pouring oil on you this one in the name of jesus drink of that wine you will be a mighty woman in the name of jesus you are a lady but you have the strength of a man you that i'm talking to and the lord himself i'm seeing you run and even when others are weak and falling you are continuing you are just moving i pray for you in the name of jesus christ that grace for revival let it rest upon your life that grace for revival, let it rest upon your life. In the name of Jesus Christ. There is a family here the Lord is showing me. Nobody has settled down maritally in that family. You don't have to come out. The power of God, I'm seeing one, two, three, four. Four of them. Right now, wherever you are, the anointing of the Holy Spirit is resting upon you. He's breaking that yoke now. In the name of Jesus. At the count of three, that grace is locating people and breaking that yoke one two three may that grace break every delay now the cause and the ordinance of darkness that is stopping people from moving to settle marital in your family i come against it in the name of jesus i come against it in the name of jesus hallelujah if you are trusting god for a miracle in any part of your body please lay your hands there right now lay your hands there right now someone on this row i'm seeing the power of god come on one person a very strong anointing i just saw like a wind just came to rest on someone in the name of jesus christ the son of the living god this row that i'm facing i just saw a wind father whoever that person is may that grace right now rest upon that person and shift that person to a new dimension in the spirit in the name of jesus christ please lay your hands i want to pray for you this is 25 years of god's faithfulness over this assembly we want to pray and cancel age-long challenges father in the name of jesus i rebuke the spirit of infirmity let me look at that woman i'm seeing a snake just moving up and down that woman please shift i command that devil out of her now in the name of jesus christ release the destiny of that woman that woman seated in the name of jesus release her right now in the name of jesus christ the bible says even the lawful captive shall be delivered i pray for everyone here whatever is keeping you in captivity right now as i speak 
be delivered in the name of Jesus Christ. Be delivered in the name of Jesus Christ. Be delivered in the name of Jesus Christ. Now I pray for the sick. Every blood disease here in the name of Jesus be healed right now. Migraines be healed in the name of Jesus. Every bone condition be healed in the name of Jesus. Every eye condition be healed in the name of Jesus. Partial deafness, complete deafness be healed in the name of Jesus. Every growth in your body. I command that growth out of your body now. In the name of Jesus Christ. Whether I mention your case or not. Every ailment in your body according to the word of the Lord. I command you free right now forever. In the name of Jesus Christ. I want to release the grace for speed in this place. Believe me, there is a real grace for speed. Every time I pray that prayer, the power of God comes upon people and they start running physically. Please, whether you are an usher or not, protect them so they don't injure themselves. Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray that among the many graces that will rest upon your people, let this one right now, there are men and women here who have been delayed. There are families who have been delayed. At the count of three, I declare like the dew of Hammon, may that grace that makes for speed rest upon you. One, two, three. Take that grace now. Take that grace. Speed. I speak speed to your destiny. Speed in career. Speed in ministry. Help them please. I command speed. I prophesy speed in the name of Jesus. No more delay for your family. No more delay for your destiny. I release into the realm of speed. In the name of Jesus Christ. Supernatural speed. Ten years in one year. 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 Hear me. Anyone here trusting God for a job, lift your hands. Let's end this thing once and for all. In the name of Jesus, and by the measure of grace that God has put upon my life, I speak to you within now and three months. Like the ark that was in the house of Oben Edom, I speak to you, hear the word of the Lord. Between now and the next three months, return with a noble and an honorable job. Please believe it. Believe it. The Bible says, Blessed is she that believes, for unto her there shall be a performance. I say it again. Return with an honorable job. Every dying business in this place, hear the word of the Lord. I speak to you. Come back to life now. Come back to life now. I don't know who is sitting on what belongs to you. Karis Kabarata. Embreketes Kobarata Shalatia. In the name of Jesus, everything that is yours but has not entered your hand, I push it to you by prophecy. I push it to your destiny by prophecy. If you are in the music ministry here, please lift your hands. It's time to anoint people into prophetic psalmistry. Not just special numbers. Songs that are ladders in the spirit. That men will climb to higher dimensions of grace. Wherever you are, at the count of three, I want you to lay that hand on your head. There is a strong anointing that will come on you. Songs you did not compose, you will begin to receive them in dreams. Father, I pray that you honor these people. That in this land of Enugu, the east of the Niger, let people arise that will sing the songs of Miriam. One, two, three. Take that mantle. 
in the name of Jesus. Write the songs of the Spirit in the name of Jesus. Songs that will lead men to higher levels of revival. I pray for the worship team in this church. Begin to receive songs. Songs of the Spirit. Songs of power. Songs of revival. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. When God blessed man, the first command was be fruitful. And the Bible says, they that be planted in the house of God, it says they will flourish in the courts of our God, that even in old age, they will be fat and flourishing. I stretch my hands towards you. Whatever has stopped your fruitfulness, biologically, financially, intellectually, I speak to you in the name that is above all names. And I pray that as I speak this word, it will be true in your life. Be fruitful in the name of Jesus. Be fruitful in the name of Jesus. Let me pray for all of you who are students here. There is an anointing called the finisher's anointing. It's one thing to start. But it's another thing to finish strong. His name is not Alpha alone. His name is also Omega. Therefore I declare. Whatever you have started. First your academics. Then every other aspect of your life. I release the finisher's anointing upon you. I release the finisher's anointing upon you. I release the finisher's anointing upon you. In the name of Jesus Christ. I release the finisher's anointing upon you. Can I pray for your prayer life? Listen. Some of you, this is not the way you started with God. You started with fire and hunger. But somewhere along the line, distractions, lust of the flesh, lust of the eyes, the pride of life, ate away your passion and your hunger. And now you're not even serious with spiritual things. And some of you are like Samson that your hair has been cut. But right now I speak to you. In the name of Jesus, I speak to your prayer altar. Catch fire. Catch fire. Catch fire. Prayer fire. Fasting fire. The grace to travail. In the name of Jesus, I cast away spiritual laziness from your life, from this region. In the name of Jesus. There is the spirit of revelation that can open a man's eyes to see. You can open this Bible, but until the scrolls are open, you will not see anything. I hold my Bible as a prophetic point of contact and I cry to my God and my maker in the name of Jesus over this, this meeting, over this city. I'm seeing at least 21 people. This grace is coming upon them. May the spirit of revelation the eyes that see and the ears that hear may it rest upon your ministry. Marusa Pereketo Shalakata Brandakata, Ebrekete Katusiata, and the utterance to communicate the things that you see and know. Receive that grace now. Take that fire now. In the name of Jesus, insight into scripture, spiritual illumination. I release it upon your life. By wisdom, O oh God. Heaven's gates open up With understanding you order the season Creating day and night Turning darkness into light Arranging the stars to your reason Now listen We're going to pray one prayer for the church in Enugu 
not just a denomination, the church. We are going to say, Lord, bring the church into a level of unity, a level of fire, regardless what we may not agree in, regardless what we may not believe. There may be minor differences based on how God has dealt with us. But we are going to pray and say, Father, unite the church that in spite of our differences, in spite of differences in dimensions, the church will rise in Enugu like a global force that will fight the gate of darkness. Lift your voice in one minute and begin to pray. Pray. Pray for your pastor. Pray for your prophet. Pray for your apostle. Pray for the men and the women of God in this city. Are you praying? Lord, keep them. Lord, keep them. Don't criticize them. Pray for them. Pray for strength. Pray for their families. Pray for their resources. Pray for their ministries. Give them the discipline, oh God, to be consistent. Someone is praying. Let there be the reign of love. We drive away error from this city. We drive away witchcraft from this city. We drive away the orchestrations of hell from this city. Pray for the church. Multiplied visions, oh God. Multiplied encounters, oh God. Fresh fire upon every altar, regardless of denomination. Fresh fire, evangelism fire, prophetic fire, apostolic fire. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We're rounding up. I want to speak over the gates of this city. Every city has gates. There are legal gates and there are demonic gates. The gates that stop development. The gates that stop advancement of the gospel. Right now, I want you to agree with me. I stand in the name of Jesus. A new good state. Lift up your heads, O oh, ye gates, ancient gates, ancestral gates, altars that have been covenanted to say people will not rise beyond a certain level. I stand in agreement with all the vessels of honor and we declare by the Spirit of God every gate that was not set up by his majesty over Enugu state over the east of the Niger hear the word of the Lord we come by a higher rod a higher priesthood and in the name of Jesus be broken be broken over families be broken over territories be broken in government be broken I come from a region where you would hardly spend three years doing ministry. It's like the maximum time of impact is three years. After three years, something must bring you down. So you hear stories of people who were once mighty. I pray for someone here that you were once on fire and something brought you down. I lay my hands on my head as a point of contact and I declare whatever has brought you down I prophesy to you rise up to that place of the anointing rise up to that place of glory rise up to that place of power rise up to that place of insight final prayer please listen the Bible says there remained this tree faith that moves mountains hope that maketh not ashamed and love which is the bond of perfectness many regions have passed the faith test many regions have passed the hope test 
But where many of us men of God and even many regions have failed, woefully so, is the love test. I've seen many powerful men and women of God across the earth. I have seen mighty vessels of God, music ministers, prophets, apostles, pastors. We are good in every other thing. But when it has to do with loving the body, we love God, but we hate the body. And sometimes we mentor people after that hatred. We come from various backgrounds that are full of battles. And we carry those battles and bring it to ministry. Let me tell you this. The hallmark of transformation is not knowledge. It's love. The proof that you are really transformed is not enlightenment. It's love. Not just love for God. Love for the body. A good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. We are going to pray. If the church in Enugu state, like I am seeing now, can step into a higher dimension of love, where regardless of the differences, a member of this church will not see a member of this church. You may have differences in revelation. I agree. Unity is not uniformity. No. There are dimensions committed to people. And it is true that certain dimensions are more superior than others based on the personal sacrifices of people. But we must train ourselves to know that regardless the differences, there is one Lord, there is one faith, there is one baptism. You must fight the spirit of division over this city. There is a prophetic agenda that God has birthed this year. It must be guarded jealously. That regardless of what denomination, regardless of what you don't believe or don't believe, you should be able to hug your brother or hug your sister. Run away from competitive jealousy. It is the way of mediocres. You must be able to love and embrace people. That a day will come, somebody will be organizing a program that is not your program. And you can pay for vehicles and say, please, I'm paying for 10 vehicles for that meeting. And it's not like you are going to be sitting in front. That what affects one person, whether he's your member or not, the whole body feels the pain. Not that something happens to someone and you say, thank God it's not my church or not my pastor. No. Enugu State, hear me. These are my final admonishments. Let the cry of one be the cry of all. Let the joy of one be the joy of all. That if a pastor is crying in this city, it is everybody's tears. You come together and kneel down and cry with him. And say in the name of Jesus we will cry together. If a pastor is rejoicing in this city, it is the joy of everyone. If someone is celebrating in a church, it is the joy of everybody. Provided the name of Christ is named, it is enough for love and unity. It is going to be the last prayer and then I am done. I cannot round up this conference talking about revelation and love and all of that. Alexander Doway had a rift with Maria Woodward Eater. He did not know there was a mighty woman of God who was being used. And those days, they didn't have value for women in ministry. And Alexander Doway thought he was the one who was the ultimate. And he was theologically or historically agreed to be like the spiritual mayor of Illinois. And he wanted to build Zion City. It was a good intention, but it was not directed by God. And when he heard about Maria Woodward Eater, he was the greatest persecutor of Maria Woodward Eater. Because of a dimension of evangelism, she introduced called presence evangelism, where the power of God will come upon people. Don't criticize dimensions you do not understand. Sustain the humility and the flexibility to learn, or at best be silent and let God be the judge of his church. Are we together? But we are going to pray that one last prayer. Listen, I want you to pray and say, Lord, help me love the body of Christ. Unite the body of Christ in Enugu State. Let our fathers once again see the love of God poured out in Enugu State. That anybody who brings the spirit of division in this state, the gate will reject them and send them out. We may not be anointed at the same level, that is true. We may not have the same access to light at the same level, that is true. But let me tell you this. 
it is in the unity and the love of the body of Christ that revival will come. Can you pray this one last prayer? Father, love. 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 You are praying. Love for the body of Christ. Love for the church in Enugu. In spite of the imperfections, in spite of the limitations, the church is a project in progress, but it is still the bride of Christ. Pray. Love. Help me to love the church. Help me to love and respect men of God. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. This is my last session. Tomorrow I leave this city. I want to just use this opportunity and I'm glad that Reverend Dan is here, our father the bishop is here and um, the pastor, the overseer of this assembly is here. I really, really want to appreciate you for the love, the honor that you have shown me every time I have come to this city and especially this year. Thank you. It is one thing to be anointed. It is one thing to be called, but it's another thing to discern the grace of a man of God and to also invest your loyalty, your honor, your reception. I thank you for the hospitality, for myself and my team. Thank you for the sacrifices. And I want you to know in the name of Jesus that I will continue to pray for you and continue to desire that Enugu State and indeed the east of the Niger becomes a true representation of all that Jesus desires for it to be. I bless you from the depth of my heart and I pray that you continue to go from glory to glory in Jesus' name. Thank you very much. Amen. Don't move. Don't move. Ushers, take care of these people. You are making a mockery of all we have been taught. If you are just moving out like this, this is not a representation of Apostle Selman's teachings. There must be obedience. There are some important things we still want to do. Number one, we want to tell you of tomorrow that there is a special anointing service for students and singles and those who want to carry this revival mantle to this generation don't miss it all these our fathers will be here tomorrow to anoint everyone specially and we say if the lord leads you make tomorrow a day of fasting if the lord leads you as much as you can do it's not compulsory that all of us to be here then sunday is the grand finale of this program there will be enough food enough drink enough gifts for everybody especially our ministers special packages listen to me it's not ethical that your pastor is talking and you are moving these are abnormalities in the body of christ you don't move when we have not even shared the grace there are other things we still want to do and you are just rushing away we've come here to honor god not just to honor man in as much as we are yesterday talking about god and you are moving away you are disrespecting the god we are serving so please please don't grieve the heart of god don't give the heart of our fathers i want to say that as the meeting was going on two of the key fathers in the city came in yes our father Ash Bishop Ed is the prelate of the Methodist Church, is one all of this region. It was the immediate 
chairman of Khan, and uh, at least the past chairman of Khan before the present one. And he has graciously come to our midst tonight. You are welcome, sir. Then the present chairman of Khan, Reverend Emmanuel Ede, came in also. Uh, I think probably something must have taken him out. So he came in to grace this program. Uh, we thank God for all the other ministers. Pastor, I don't know if I, it's also your Kingdom Fortress Ministries. You are welcome, sir. And all the other people who have come to honor this ministry. May the Lord bless you richly. Like I told you in the morning, we are just past the half mark. Tomorrow, Sunday, are special days. The problem with many of us is that we don't allow a seal and a perfection of whatever God is doing in our lives. We rush away. And I pray you will not miss all that God has in mind for you this time around. Can I hear you say good amen? amen. Ah, tomorrow is going to be explosive. Like I said, there's going to be special drama tomorrow. Sanjay is coming tomorrow. Victor Sachs is coming tomorrow. The Enugu Mass Choir is coming tomorrow. It's going to be a day, a, an evening of variety, anointing, and impartation. So, you, what you will see tomorrow will be extraordinary. Don't miss it. Get it before we get into the final realm of celebration on Sunday. Like I said, there is something for everybody, especially the ministers. We appreciate what you have done. We said tonight we are going to take a special seed. Either on behalf of your church, on behalf of your family, on behalf of your ministry, you want to give an Isaac offering. Something sacrificial. Something meaningful. And I pray you will not fail God. You see, many of us, like we had yesterday, we fail at the point of offering. But before we take our, our offering, I want to just ask these two, of, these two fathers, let them just still pray for all of us. We cannot pray too much. Don't be in a hurry. Daddy, Obi, Daddy, they just one, one minute prayer. The Lord bless you. Sirs, can you just come and bless the people? One minute, one minute. Then get the final, then they take the offering and we'll be ready to go. Share the grace. You are welcome, sirs. Don't be in a hurry. Let patience add its perfect work. You see why we keep on having conferences, conferences, and no transformation. At times we are too much in a hurry. We don't allow God to perfect his work in our lives. Like I mentioned yesterday, God needs time to walk in a man. Amen. Praise the Lord. First, let me bring a felicitation of the entire Christian Council of Nigeria to the Old Path Commission on the celebration of their 25th anniversary. 25 years is not 25 days. And thus far, the Lord has been your strength. We will continue to partner with you as a ministry and as a body of Christ in the work we have to do in this state. Like Apostle Selma said, we need unity now in the body of Christ more than ever before. And on my part, as the leader of the Christian Council of Nigeria, 
the Christian Council will continue to do everything we can to foster the unity in the body of Christ. We do not discriminate against anyone in, in the body in spite of whatever difference we have in our teachings, in our dogma, or in our mode of fellowship. We want to congratulate our pastor. Congratulations. The Lord has been your strength all these years, and he has done great things through your hands, especially in championing the holiness movement in this city. The Lord will continue to strengthen you, and the Lord will strengthen this ministry and grant us grace to play our part in this end time uh, mission of the church. Amen. And so, Father, I want to give you praise for this commission. I thank you for what you have done so far over these 25 years. But Lord, I can see ahead of them greater and brighter days. Your power will continue to increase. Your glory will continue to increase in this ministry in the mighty name of Jesus. By the hands of this ministry, Lord, we are going to perfect loads of things in this city. And Lord, your name alone shall be glorified while we continue to serve you in spirit and in truth. For in Jesus' most wonderful name we have prayed. Amen. Thank you. Praise the Lord. On behalf of uh, the our block in Khan Christian Association of Nigeria, our block is CPFN PFN group. I want to sincerely congratulate the Old Part Revival Commission for the 25th. We We've already um, sent a letters of felicitation, but this is the practical side of it. What would one say on a night like this? We're still going to come back on Sunday anyway. But let me say this. The unity that we have experienced, may it continue in Jesus' name. We came from a program at... Uh, at this um, stadium and then we are all here again please note this there is a covenant tonight song give me your heart and this is what we have decided so as we go we hope you will attend the rest of the meeting for all part i like to say that the best of this ministry is yet to come. It's in the front. In Jesus' name. Heavenly Father, thank you for what we have experienced. Keep us, Lord, in your ways as we offer our hearts to you. In the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost. Somebody shout Amen. Amen. All these city fathers will still be here on Sunday. Uh, as in my chat with the Excellency, the Governor, I see all the city fathers of faith will be here on Sunday to welcome him. So I believe they will all be here. But tomorrow's anointing service will be handled by some of these fathers. All of you come with your special request prayer request tomorrow come with the dimension of success you want in academics come with the dimension of what you want in marriage I've told you Apostle Selman has discovered Sandra that people call cell woman come for the bone of your bones our male ministers and female mamas will all be here for the special anointing session tomorrow. 
Don't miss that anointing. For now, let's collect our special seed. I will be going. We we'll share the grace and go. Hallelujah. Amen. The Lord bless you in the mighty name of Jesus. Oh, please, we have the offering box. So let us pray together. Let's be on our feet. Let us be on our feet. Shall we pray? In the mighty name of Jesus, Father, we will cry for the special seed of your people. Even as they give, King in heaven, let your mighty and awesome blessing come upon them. In the mighty name of Jesus. And amen. So before we share the grace and pray for the a few minutes, we want you to know that the audio messages, the CDs that are out for this meeting, uh, one is 300 naira, then two, 250, that's 500 for two. Then the whole messages for the convention will be in the DVD, and it will be for a thousand naira, 1,000. Amen. So as you're giving, let's still be on our feet as we close the meeting. God bless you. God bless you. Let's be on our feet. Shall we pray together? In the mighty name of Jesus. I can't hear your amen. In the mighty name of Jesus. Almighty God, we want to thank you. And we'll return all the glory to your name. We want to thank you, Almighty Father, for it is a wind of revival indeed. And we want to thank you because what you have released, O oh God, will bear fruit in this land and beyond. The fire you have kindled in the life of your sons and your daughters shall burn. Thank you because your name shall be glorified. Let your hand rest upon the vessels you used. And upon, O oh God, your servant, the apostle, Father, Lord, bless him and increase him. You will sustain him and bless his future home. Thank you, Lord, because you are faithful. Eight. Love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us now and forevermore. Amen. And surely. All the days of our lives, forever and ever. Good night and God Almighty bless you. Please, if you need the DVDs, and please start making requests. Start